can't hear you coming. Hello, mother. Jay and today I'm here with my part two wrap up for June 2019. I read a total of 14 books. First part of the wrap up was the first seven. This is the last seven that I read for this month. So without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I have is Sophie Kinsella's Surprise Me and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Dan and Sylvie who go to a routine doctor's checkup and they are told that they have another 68 years to live. They begin to panic after they realize that this is actually a very long time so they decide to launch Project Surprise Me to spice up their marriage. But as time goes on and the surprises keep coming, secrets are unveiled that make them question everything. I actually really enjoyed this book. I think that it was very quick and easy to read. I flew through it. I loved the quirky cast of characters. I thought Sylvie was hilarious. I loved her inner dialogue. I also think that she was a bit naive at times which made me roll my eyes a lot like she's supposed to be like 40 or something and some of the things she said it was like okay these are the thought processes of like a 18 year old like girl grow up. I did really overall enjoy her character development. She became more like the 40 year old I was expecting by the end of the book. I also really loved her friendship with Tilda. It was actually great to see a very positive female-female friendship for once. I also really loved her twins. They were adorable and definitely a big comedic relief for the more serious parts in this book. Overall a cute funny fluffy read. The next book that I have is The Conspiracy of Us by Maggie Hall. I ended up giving this a 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Avery who ever since she was younger has constantly been moving, following her mother for her work. When she discovers that she may actually be the key to an ancient prophecy involving 12 of the most powerful families in the world, she is thrust into the life of the circle. Following two very mysterious boys, she is hunted by the order who is the enemy to the circle and she is also trying to save somebody that she loves. This was a super fun read. Is it believable? not in the slightest but it was really entertaining. I was never bored throughout the entire story. I was constantly needing to flip the pages to see what crazy thing was going to happen next. It kind of felt like an action movie with all the treasure hunting and like action that was happening. I was here for it. I'm also just a huge sucker for Paris so most of the book took place there so I really enjoyed that. I liked Avery for the most part but She's kind of an idiot for jumping on a plane with a boy that she literally just met. She was also a little bit annoying for how special Snowflake she felt. I also was really annoyed about how literally every other page was her just talking about how hot Jack was. Like they're getting shot at and she's like, wow, he's really hot. Like. I feel like you probably would not be thinking about that while bullets are flying around your head, but maybe that's just me. I don't know who I like better in the love triangle. I was a fan of Stellan. I think that his backstory was very interesting and I definitely want to know more about him. But I also really like Jack, so conflicted. I am definitely intrigued to see where the story progresses with the love triangle. I think I'm more team Stellan but I guess we'll see if I continue reading. Also huge fan of Luke. He was such a little precious cinnamon roll and he deserves better. I'm definitely going to be continuing on with this series because I want to see what happens next so I was a fan. The next book I have I gave a three out of five stars is The Favorite Sister by Jessica Newell. I was very disappointed in this because I was a huge fan of The Luckiest Girl Alive which was her debut novel. But this one fell a bit short for me. It follows up five successful middle-aged women. They're on a reality TV show called Gold Diggers and it's basically them competing for the spotlight but they never thought that this season would end in murder and it's basically the story leading up to 
the murder. The characters were all very unlikable in this book. I don't think any of them really had any redeeming qualities, which was the point, but it made it very hard to connect with any of them or care what happened to any of them. At times, I think that the plot was very slow. Honestly, for the first half of the story, I was just bored. I definitely don't think that it should be marketed as a thriller. It just was not, in my opinion. I was originally going to give it two stars, but the ending bumped it up to a three because I didn't see it coming. I was very shocked. So, you know, the shock value bumped up a star, but I am not the biggest fan of this one, which I'm very disappointed about. The next book that I have is called Grace and Fury by Tracy Banghart. I ended up giving this a four out of five stars. I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. It follows two sisters, Serena and Nomi, who grew up in a society where women have no rights. Serena has been training her entire life to become a Grace, which is a woman who stands beside the throne and is basically an example of what the perfect woman should be like, while Nomi has been training as Serena's handmaiden and basically she's the maid. So when Nomi unexpectedly catches the eye of the air, both sisters' lives change drastically. So like I said, I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would. I flew through it in two days. It was so addictive and fast-paced. Although the story is very predictable, I still really enjoyed it and I wanted to know what was going to happen next. The story is told in alternating perspectives between the two sisters. They're both very different from each other and I really liked how their roles were completely flipped by the end of the book and how they both had to adapt to their current situation. The character development of both sisters was just so well done and I loved watching them grow throughout the story. I also really loved the sister relationship between the two of them. Even though they were separated for pretty much the entire book, you could really tell how loyal and how much they cared for each other. So I'm very excited to see where the story goes in the next book. The next book that I have is actually a graphic novel. It's Old Souls by Brian McDonald and Les McLean. I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Chris who has a beautiful wife and a daughter. He seems to be living a very average, normal life. And then he meets a homeless man named Jack. Jack ends up bringing him into the life of a grave robber, which allows you to be able to see previous lives that you lived and died in. Chris becomes obsessed with one of the lives he previously lived and his carefully crafted world begins to fall apart. I wasn't a huge fan of Chris. I think that his actions were very selfish and he just got on my nerves very quickly. I think that he treated his wife terribly so it really irked me. I did really enjoy the artwork though. I think that the color scheme worked really well for the whole like eerie atmosphere of the book. There's a lot of like blacks and blues and whites which just worked really well but I think that the overall message of the story that you shouldn't live in the past you should live in the present was really well done so I am giving it a pretty average rating of 3.5 but I think that it's worth the read. The next book that I have is called Lizzie by Don Eos and I was so disappointed in this Book. I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 stars. It was advertised as a Lizzie Borden retelling that is female female romance. That's not what it was. It basically follows Lizzie Borden who, as we all know, has a very troubled life. Her parents are mentally and physically abusive. She is working at her family's bed and breakfast as a cook and that's when Bridget Sullivan, the new maid, enters her life and things change. You know, sounds like it's gonna be the female female romance that I wanted. No, no it was not. The book was very slow. It was very predictable. I was able to call the big plot twist very, very early on in the book, so that was very disappointing when it ended up being correct. I did end up reading the book in one sitting. It did fly by very quickly, but the writing style got very annoying very quickly. There was a lot of repeated words, and it just got on my nerves because it was like every single chapter had these three words repeated and I was like, pick a different word. I was disappointed that the murders and trials were thrown in for the last 20 pages 
it was all just wrapped up very quickly and I was like, okay, but I want more of the murder and the trials, not this shit that I'm getting. It was literally 20 pages of a 319 page novel about Lizzie Borden. So I was upset about it, but I did give it a 2.5 because I flew through it. It was easy to read and I was invested in the story because I wanted to know when the murder was gonna happen. And then the final book that I have, y'all are gonna be so proud of me because I finally completed the Mortal Instruments series. So this is the last book, The City of Heavenly Fire by Cassandra Clare. I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I think that it was a really great finale for the series. I'm so happy that I'm finally done. I loved seeing the characters that I love so much. I am very bitter about a couple of the deaths that happened. I don't want to talk about it. I'm also really excited about the introduction of Emma and Julian. I'm really excited to continue on to the Dark Artifices, Fices. I don't know how to say that word, but it was a really good finale, so... Yay, I'm done! Alright guys, so that was my part two wrap up for June 2019. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these and what you thought of them and I'll see you all in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>